Hi, everybody. I'm Jill Hall Smith, Dayton Realtors Government Affairs Director with the Government Affairs Committee at Dayton Realtors and Representative Rick Perales. Rick Perales has kindly agreed to discuss with us his time as a state representative, and um, he will also be running for, as his uh, term ends, he'll be running for top commissioner uh, in November. By way of introduction, Representative Perales served in the Air Force for 15 years, and he worked for U University of Dayton, and then after that, served in various positions as in public office in Green County and Beaver Creek, and with the state for nearly 20 years, including House Representative since 2012. Do I have that right, Representative? Two, two, 2013, but who's counting? Okay, sounds good. Well, we have some questions for you about your time there, and we're going to start with our government affairs uh, member, government affairs committee member named Nancy Farkas. Hi, Nancy. Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm well, um, thank you. Good to have you on today. I have one question for you regarding your, um, your tenure as a state representative. What are you most proud of having accomplished during this period? And you can certainly give us more than one. Um, answer if you have several things. Wow, good question. Um, and, and there is not one thing. I will tell you, um, when I first started, I started up the um, Ohio Avia Air Aerospace and Aviation Technology Committee. I found that as a junior or freshman legislator, we had committees for everything under the sun. And, and for, for a state that uh, um, where um, flight was was invented and all of our history in flight and and where we're going in flight and aerospace and space I just thought that we were missing that and 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 actually I stood it up in law so that uh, it, it will be there unless another legislator takes it out which I don't see happening and and that group which is still going strong representative Adam Smith is the uh, is the chair uh, they get all the aerospace um, uh, companies uh, government, academia, uh, they get all the suppliers and they talk about what we can do to improve aerospace and be more competitive as a state. Uh, and that of course means a pipeline of, of engineers, of accountants, um, how, how people can know each other better. We've been having an annual aviation aerospace day at the state house. So that I'm, I'm very proud, that's my first bill and I'm very proud of that one. Um, I would say that um, just recently, uh, I think, and I know you got lots of questions. I'll try to be respective. I could talk forever on, on legislation. I, I will say, though, that I, I am the um, um, Military and Veteran Affairs Committee Chair. I have been that for two, two uh, sessions, um, two General Assemblies, excuse me. And I, I am the chair of the Veterans Caucus. I am, uh, I, I, I guess I'm considered the uh, military veteran go-to person at the State House. And, and as such, we've been working closely with the, um, with the people in Washington, D.C. on legislations that, that we can put forward into law that makes us more competitive as a state. I've been the go-to guy for that. And I just got three bills passed by the governor in February, I think. Uh, which is unheard of, three bills signed in one day. Um, uh, and, and one before that in January, and that's what I'm gonna talk about, it's, it's reciprocity. And it's one of the top, it was one of the top bills, issues considered by the DOD, uh, Secretary Heather Wilson talked to us about it, that in K-12 education. And it was simply that uh, a military member, but more importantly, their spouse who has a professional license would have that license accepted in this in Ohio. Um, it's common sense, you know, a, 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 a medical degree in, in Nebraska is gonna be as good as a medical degree, all due respect here. Um, you know, I told the people pushing back a little in the medical community that if I have an appendic appendicitis attack and I'm in, in um, I won't say Michigan, in Pennsylvania, I'm not gonna come back to Ohio, you know, I'm gonna go to a doctor out there. That was a big deal, and we had the signing at the um, at the uh, museum, Air Force Museum. Uh, we've had many um, other bills that I've either directed to other legislators that have to do with their expertise and their sweet spot, if you will. Um, of course, what that means to you folks is uh, it makes us more competitive 
for the missions as we talk about um, uh, BRAC space realignment and closures or just mission realignments. Um, we got the F-35 mission, the sustainment mission last year, uh, which was over a thousand jobs, high paying jobs. It's moving in the course of years. Of course, all those people are gonna need to live here and have houses. Uh, right now we're in the middle of the uh, Space Command um, uh, headquarters competition, which I gotta tell you, we're an underdog. Colorado's got the, uh, um, the lead on that. But uh, even if we don't win, if we're competitive, that can lead to win, wins in the future. So I think those are the two, but there, there's so many more I'm proud of. And, and I feel like I've, um, I've, I've, I've done a decent job. I've done a good job at the State House in my uh, seven and a half years. And of course, you folks know I'm termed out this year. Our next question is with Barbara Waddell, a committee member and realtor. All right. Well, good morning, and thank you for coming. So the question that I have for you is the question that's on every parent's mind and heart. With the coronavirus pandemic um, still very unsettling, um, what are your thoughts about the school's openings or closures um, this fall and um, what that impact might mean to the Miami Valley? Well, well yeah, let me say this first. Um, uh, I respect what the governor and lieutenant governor has done. That, that has been a tough job. And about half the people hate what he's doing and half love what he's doing. Uh, he's in a tough spot and he's a good man. He cares. I know him personally and I know he's doing the best he can. That said, I've always been more of the um, strategic attack versus a shotgun attack. Um, and, and as far as school goes, I really, so that we all know the science of, 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 of how children are affected by this. We've seen it in other countries, we've seen it here. Um, with that said, I believe that this is a local school district um, uh, decision. I think that the local school boards were, were put into place to uh, make decisions like, tough decisions like this. And I think, you know, um, a situation in downtown Dayton might be different than a situation in downtown Cedarville. Well, it is different, clearly. Uh, and I think the local folks need to be doing it. Now, that said, uh, we've still got a couple months before school starts. Anything can happen, good or bad. And, and if anything changes, that could change my pension opinion. But right now, I believe we got to leave it up to our school boards to look at all that's all the dimensions of what's going on, uh, how it affects their community. Because, you know, besides the illness, we know that the kids not being in school is hurting us. Uh, and and we, we won't see the total effects of that for years. Um, it, it, just like the seniors and, and not having it, uh, being able to contact in senior homes, not being able to talk to their families or be in contact with them, that hurts. Um, and how much, I'm not sure, but I, I don't think anyone would disagree that children in school is much better than children having online learning. All things equal and nothing changes. That's where I stand. Now, I think your second question, Barbara, was how does that affect Dayton? Mm -hmm. You mean yes. Dayton, the city of Dayton? Well, the Miami Jeff Valley. Area? Well, the I, whole I, Miami I think Valley I might have, okay, I think I might have answered that. I think kids in mm -hmm. school learn to get along, learn, learn all those soft skills, um, in, in the city of Dayton, they get fed too, and in, in, in many schools, Fairborn and Greene County, um, nutrition is important. But I think that um, um, the the real effects of them not being in school will be maybe a year down the line, two years ago. And then and then there's all the competition. I have a daughter, uh, oh, excuse me, a niece who um, was going to be like a um, the lead band person, and and all she could think about was that and practice that and then they've canceled a ban at that place. Um, so so it, it affects our, our children, it gives them something to work for uh, and learn those soft skills and hard skills about hard work and what it means. Um, I just went to a graduation, a small graduation function. A kid at Beaver Creek High School, he was the uh, oh, number one ranked wrestler in the 182 pound category for the state of Ohio. He was 44 and zero and he didn't get to finish it up. No one's fault. It's just a shame that, and there's there's thousands of stories like that out there. So uh, my inclination is get these kids in school if we could all at all possibly do that, but it should be a decision left to the Board of Education. We have a question from Ralph Mantica, a realtor and board member and next year's treasurer for the State Realtor Association. 
Good morning. Ralph, how are you? This morning. Thank you. Uh, we all know the importance of the base and, and the economic income it has here to the, to the Dayton area. And you just mentioned that we might be in second place here to Colorado on the, the space command or whatever they're going to call it. But what, do, what can we do as realtors to try to improve the base's positions when it comes to these types of uh, decisions that the government makes? Um, Great question, Ralph. Or, or, I'm sorry, are you done? But yes. Hey, let me, let me clarify. I didn't say we were in second. I said we weren't the favor. <laughs> I don't want that to get out. I, I mean, we're probably a long shot here. Uh, but, but what I'm trying to convince my colleagues of is even a loss can be a win if we play it right. We have probably a thousand space jobs right now at Wright-Patterson. They could easily say, we want to bring that back to Buckley if that's, if that's a winner. We've got to show them that it's important for them to work with NASIC. So everything we do, win or lose, matters. And, and you know, the, the legislation we do. So I'll tell you uh, what I think we can work on. Um, I think that you folks need to make sure that you're in contact with your legislators all the time. And when you hear something like that, you ask them what they're doing. What do they think about it? And make sure they're on board. I will tell you, all of the bills I've had for veteran and military members, I had another one um, that um, Nancy, I didn't tell you about, which, which got passed by the governor just recently, where um, special need families, so uh, say a, a, a military member has a, a, a child who has special needs, wheelchair, whatever, they've had to wait two years or longer in Ohio to get services. That's unacceptable. They, so they have to stay at home, Virginia say, pay extra out of their pocket, or they don't get the services for two or three years and then they move on. We passed a bill and another, uh, so they're not cutting line on our people waiting, but it's another line. And, and now when they come, they'll get service right away. Those are the kinds of things that make our base better, more acceptable, more military family. I'll tell you something else I've been working uh, with a great uh, black a little bit. It didn't go too far. I want to um, combine the Board of Realtors website, link them together with the base housing website. So I met with the base commander last, probably a year and a half ago about this. He just wasn't very receptive. He was nervous about it and he kept deferring to headquarters and, and I get that. I was a military member. But I think if we could combine the, the, the power of both of them, and you can see what the housing opportunity, what the base is looking for, and military members say in um, New Mexico, move, New Mexico that has an opportunity to move here, can go to a site and they can see the bases and the real estate at the same time. They can see the schools, uh, the districts, the grading. I think we have a lot of that in ours, but I think you have a lot of that in yours too. If you have a kid who's in ice hockey, or ice skating, you know, you're gonna, if, if that's a big deal, you're gonna wanna know that that city or area has ice hockey. I think we could combine that and have a very powerful and robust system that could serve us very well. So the new wing commander came in, I'm meeting him next, I'm actually I'm meeting him Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. Nice fella, his background is like mine, he's a civil engineer, so we have a lot in common. Uh, we've never met, but we've worked for the same people, and he, of course, is much younger than me. And I would tell you, Ralph, uh, back in 2005, I was a county commissioner. Uh, what I'm going for now is a Green County commissioner. I led a contingent. I don't know uh, how many of you folks were involved in BRAC 2005, but it was a big deal. I led a contingent down to San Antonio because it, it looked like we were going to get the mission. But if we didn't get the people to support that mission, which is hundreds and hundreds from Wright Patterson, if we didn't get them, we were going to fail. That was key, and if we failed, guess what? They never look at us again. I led a contingent with realtors going down there with school people, and I saw firsthand how the families, we met with spouses, and they'd ask about, they loved our bike trails. They loved our bike trails. Um, you know, San Antonio has uh, the river, um, The they have a lot, but San Antonio, like DC, like LA, like Boston, has big city traffic. You know, uh, when the wing commander there said he was stationed at Beaver, or right Pat lived in Beaver Creek, he'd get out, go outside in the morning, drink a cup of coffee, watch the deers, and then go to work, take him five minutes. And now he has to go to work at five o'clock or he's stuck in traffic. You know, those are the kind of things we need to look at from somebody else's perspective. We'll never have the beach, right? 
sometimes that's good during hurricane seasons. But, but we have a lot that we can offer, and we have to keep promoting that. And that's why I think the more we talk hand-in-hand hand with the right path, I think the better off we are. Appreciate it, Rick. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, Mike and Adriana were next to ask questions. Good morning. Thanks for coming. We appreciate you being here. Pleasure, Michael. Uh -huh. Uh, in your position as a state representative, you had the ability to impact citizens across Ohio. Were there issues that you wanted to accomplish during your terms as state representative that you were unable to accomplish? And can you talk about what, what might have gotten in the way? And if elected to the Greene County Commission, can you bring those issues forward still? Well, wow, good questions. Um, good questions. Um, uh, I will tell you this, that unfortunately, and, and, you know, kind of confidential, but it, it's a fact. The, our leadership in the House and the um, Senate weren't in sync. And, and, and uh, some of my bills got, um, got caught in, 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 in the um, leverage um, of that. Good bills. And, and not just mine, many. I'll tell you one. Um, I, had a, I started a joint resolution between the Senate and the House working with the D.C. folks for Space Command just to say, Great place, uh, you know, talk, you know, talk about how they, we collaborate with Cleveland, NASA, Glenn, the universities, our aerospace, and it was a great proposal, and um, it got caught up in politics. And it had to be out by uh, June, I think, and I couldn't get it out. And I thought it made us look bad. I mean, um, this wasn't political. This was, and this, this wasn't um, uh, NRDRR. This was good for everyone. Now, uh, good news, Senate, Senator Hackett got it out of the Senate. So I still have a chance when we go back in the fall and do it. But, um, but what I had to do was write, a, um, uh, the, the speaker and I signed the certificate, uh, congratulate Wright Pat for everything they've done and, say, and at the end said this would be a great home. And that's what I'm going to present to the wing commander uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, but I had many bills like that, that it just takes a lot of time to get bills through. I have a, a great one, and now you're talking Greene County. And I like to, when I talk to people, I like to, to really let them know that we get our ideas from you folks. Um, um, uh, uh, they, you know, we're not brilliant. Well, a few of us are, but not me. Um, I, I know how to work it. I know how to work with people, and I see a good deal. Well, the auditor, David Graham, Green County Auditor, came up to me uh, shortly after the uh, tornadoes, and he said, Rick, with technology today, well, let me, let me back, back, uh, back up on that. He said, if, if your home got damaged or destroyed during a tornado, you had to uh, get um, someone to inspect it, get it notarized, and go to the auditor's office so that they would do a reassessment. So this time around, say your home, your, your, um, your property uh, taxes were $4,000, $5,000, uh, they, they can only reassess that, even if it was totally destroyed, if you set through all these hoops. Now, if your home's damaged and you have kids, you're worried about where you're going to live, where you're going to find clothing, where they're going to go to school, you know. Uh, so David Graham came up to me and he said, Rick, with technology, I can see exactly on GPS what's going on with that house. I know when it happened. I could pretty, we, not just him, but auditors could pretty much figure out the value, what's going on. And we can do it without bothering them. Right? Great bill. Common sense. No, no brainer. We got it in and we finally got it through committee. Uh, but that means we got it through House committee. It's got to go through the House, get approved on the floor, go to the same thing in the Senate, and I'm going to get timed out. I won't be able to do it. Now, we will get this done. It got out unanimously. No one, does, no one is against this. It just takes time. That's what I'm going to push my replacement on and others. And I'll tell you the other thing, Michael, that's a great question because – I think, I, so I was a mayor first for two years. That's our term here in Beaver Creek. I was a county commissioner for eight. I'll be a state rep for eight. I've got so many contacts. I understand how it works that I know who I can go to and ask them if they could stand on this bill and, and help me get it out there. So I think that, that all that experience is really going to bear a valuable for the county and for the region uh, because a, a bill like the one I just talked about, which I called Auditors, Emergency Assessment, AEA, there's always got to be an acronym, uh, is going to serve, of course, Dayton well and all the other uh, communities well when they have an emergency. So I've got a list of bills that are still important to me that I'll figure out, prioritize which ones and who I can work with. 
Good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you very much. You know, and, and Michael, one further, Nat, uh, no surprise, you guys as realtor, realtors know better than anyone. It's about context. It's about relationships. And, and uh, you can't replace those relationships I've made in, in, in first in, in the state, but back then and still at the county and at the city level. And of course, when I was at the U University of Dayton, uh, as an executive director of facilities for a decade, I got to know everyone at the city and I still know most of those people and have great relationships, nonpartisan relationships with them. Ralph, I see you have our hand raised. I mean, obviously housing and affordable housing is, is a major issue of, for the whole region. And at least I've had experience in Greene County where part of the problem of not being able to develop more affordable housing is the lack of proper the lack of sewage treatment plant capacity or getting the, the sewer lines to the properties that, that people want to try to develop. Is there anything that you see in the future that might help solve some of this uh, development of some of the land out in Greene County? Uh, a great question. And as a civil engineer, I've gotten, I've, I've worked this at UD. I've worked this all over. And I, I, by the way, I was also the civil engineer commander at Wright-Patterson. That's why I know the infrastructure so well. And, and uh, water waste um, is, is very important, as is the service for water. Uh, what, well, I said that water waste. It's very important. And, and you cannot develop without that. Extending water waste to developments, commercial or residential, is expensive. And, and we have a system in place, so is Montgomery County, where uh, when the time is right, when we're able to do that, when it's, when it's cost effective to do it, we can do the uh, major infrastructure and of course the, um, the owners or the developers will be, would be responsible for taking it to the main, to the, um, to the house or unit. Um, that's worked pretty well. Um, I think we just need to, and this goes to um, the, um, um, the uh, Miami Valley uh, planning and our own Green County planning, Montgomery County has it, to, to identify areas where we want to put um, commercial or residential and work towards getting something there. Um, you know, if somebody gets out in, in a farm and, and um, they're away from, uh, there's not much we can do. You know, the Green Country Club over in, um, I guess that's in Bath Township, uh, went out of business and they could have been uh, very successful, but they didn't have water or sewer. And you can't do a business that they could have developed some. I think we're closer now if we, in fact, don't have water and sewer out there. So I think it's about keeping up with regional planning and identifying areas that we know is going to need it and trying to stay ahead of that.